What's up guys, my name is Ivan Valdovinos and I create videos on graduate school life and advice. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's get right into the video. Harvard also wants you to write a statement of purpose. This statement of purpose differs from a personal statement. A personal statement is more around your um, educational journey, your ethnicity, your race, things like that. Um, and a statement of purpose really wants you to dive into your mission, your vision. What do you want to do with your career? What is your career goal? Where do you see yourself going? in the next five years? How can a Harvard education um, propel you to that next goal, your reach goal, whatever it is? So I suggest that you start the statement of purpose really early um, before you even uh, open up the application. Start this the summer before. So start this now if you're applying this next cycle and start thinking of ideas, start drafting some drafts, do some um, brainstorming, do some rewriting. And then once you have a full first draft, ask a faculty member, ask a teacher, ask a friend, ask um, someone at your institution institution to give you some feedback and see if you're in the right direction. I also suggest that you read um, some books on what are some what are some ways to build your a strong statement of purpose. I did that when I was applying and I always feel like it's really helpful to uh, look at examples. I will be reading my statement of purpose um, for Harvard in the next video so make sure you subscribe and um, that way you're able to, to listen to my successful Harvard application statement of purpose. Some of the key things to remember when you're writing the statement of purpose is that you want to read the instructions um, as many times as possible and that you understand the instructions. For my Harvard application, they asked me, uh, I think it was at least five questions that I needed to answer throughout my my statement of purpose. And so I suggest that you study that, that website and that you um, make sure you answer the questions, that you don't leave it for assumption, that you clearly answer the questions. That way they know that you can follow um, directions and that you read and did your, your research. I I also suggest that you research the website as much as possible. My other video that I did on how to get into Harvard um, explain a little bit more about that. So I will um, make sure I link it down below, but also up here in the card. And so um, one way to stand out in this statement of purpose is to define your niche or your niche. What is the thing that makes you stand apart from all the other applicants? One thing that you should already know is that people that apply to Harvard are some of the smartest, some of the most, um, the most accomplished people on the planet. And so you're going to want to make sure that you can stand with them and surpass them. And so the way that you can do this is by telling Harvard your niche. Like I mentioned earlier, my niche was research in, in family engagement, particularly Latino fathers involvement. And so I know that not that many people and not that much literature talks about that. Um, and so I knew that I can get into um, Harvard by mentioning this niche that I was trying to tackle and that I was trying to improve and make known to the world um, to help improve education educational outcomes. So make sure that you figure out what your niche is and talk about that in your person in your statement of purpose. Another thing that the Harvard application asks you for is a resume or curriculum vitae. What this is is just a summary um, of your employment history, your research experience, the conferences you attended, your presentations, etc. And so you're pretty much telling them um, what you've done throughout your undergraduate career or your career, professional career, uh, on a piece of paper. On the website, it does say that you can construct or you can send as many pages as possible. When I was reading about this and just trying to determine how much pages I wanted to include, it did say no more than two um, in all the things that I read. But for me, because my GREs were so low and my GPA of a 3.49, I thought um, I thought it wasn't as high. I needed to showcase more about myself. So my CV was actually five pages because I wanted to tell Harvard everything I have done um, during my undergraduate career. And and how I can be an asset to the Harvard community, the Harvard Graduate School of Education community, and what I can share my perspectives, my background, that can be an asset to uh, the conversations that were that were taking place at Harvard. And so the five pages for me included a different things. I definitely wanted to highlight my research experience because I thought that was a strong suit in my application, as well as my employment history, my internships, my work study jobs, things like that. All of all of the things that I did that I placed in my CV were relevant to education. Education. So if you're applying to other programs, let's say in the Divinity School or the School of Arts and Sciences or um, the Public Policy School or even Medical School or Law School, definitely make sure that your resume or CV fit your your um, program, your department, because that's where you apply. You're going to want to let them know that I ha that you have uh, 
um, constructed your undergraduate career and professional career to fit your ultimate goal of being a lawyer, a medical doctor, a um, whatever it is that you want to do. And so for me, I made sure that my CV was specifically targeted towards educa the education sector. And so I suggest that you do that as well. On your application, you're also going to have to include three letters of recommendation. So what you do is they're going to ask you for um, the le these letter writers' emails, their name, their title, and um, it also gives you um, a little space to write a note to your letter of rec writer. And so I suggest that you start this process early, start it in the summer before you apply, and start deciding on three to five people that you want to write you letters. Um, don't take this section lightly because it can actually help you get into Harvard. I know some of my other colleagues who applied mentioned um, they had letter writers who were alumni of the of the education school and so um, that does play a role into um, a successful admissions to the Harvard Graduate School of Education. For me I did not know any alumni and so and so the way that I tackled this was I wanted to show different aspects of myself. So I had my um, University of Arizona research mentor as one of my letters of rec writers. I had an advisor that um, that advised the, the club that I was in and then I also had well, I also had a education professor that write me a letter. And so the way that I went about selecting these letters, letter of rec writers, was by thinking about different aspects of my journey and what I wanted Harvard to know. So for my research mentor, I wanted them to showcase my research skills, my research background, and talk about um, my passion for Latinx work. And so I made sure that I told my letter of rec writer for, um, for my research to indicate different aspects such as me um, being a strong writer and doing qualitative work and transcribing interviews and um, being a good public speaker. And so I suggest that you write bullet points to your letter of rec writer when you, when you ask them. And then you also want to mention to them to write you a strong letter. If they cannot write you a strong letter, then they, they're probably not the best person to write you a letter of rec. They don't, you don't want them to write you a generic letter. It has to be a strong letter that's detailed and about you and that only fits you, not every other person. Um, Because this is going to help the admissions committee really dig deep into who you are and your academic and personal skill sets. For the, the reason why I chose the advisor for my club as someone to write me a letter was because I knew this person for three years and I was um, working with them for three years. And so one of the biggest things in the club that I led was a campus-wide mock career fair. And so I started this mock career fair from the beginning, from scratch, um, and she was she was instrumental in helping me get this up and running. They actually still run it now after, what, five years? And so um, so I was, I told this letter of rec writer to make sure that they included my leadership skills and how I could lead a team to um, put up this big event that was campus-wide. I also wanted her to tell about my um, work ethic and how I was meeting with so many people on campus um, regarding funding and just um, and asking people to present at, at this event. Um, and so I wanted her to showcase my leadership skills and how I can um, start up a an initiative on campus. The last person that I asked to write me a letter of recommendation was an education professor that I uh, that I had. And so I took her class for one semester, which was what, 12 weeks. And so through this 12 week class, I was able to um, show her that I was thinking about education um, critically and that I wanted to improve the outcomes for um, Latinos and Latinx people. And um, I also showcased that I was going to be a great teacher because in this course, I had to teach some classes and do some like mock teaching um, lesson plans. And so she was able to, the letter of rec writer was able to see that I would be a great teacher by me facilitating these lesson plans. And then I also work at the writing center, which she was the director of. And so she was able to see that I can give clear directions and instructions and help students out with their writing. And I wanted to be an English teacher so, and specifically targeting students who didn't do so well in writing. And so me volunteering at the writing center also provided a different side of me and who I was in terms of my teaching skills, but also um, me improving students' writings by giving advice. And so I asked my letter of rec writer to write all these things that I did um, in that letter. That way there, um, that way Harvard was able to see me in a different light in terms of going back to that, me being a, a strong writer. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of how I chose my letters of rec writers. But definitely start early and jot down, write down, type up. Why are you choosing this person? How is this person going to help you gain admission to whatever school you're applying? And, um, and showcase different sides of you through these letters, not just one 
generic and you don't keep it to like, I'm gonna choose three research people, uh, three research advisors. Unless you're applying for a PhD, then that's crucial. But try to showcase different parts of you through these letters. So the final thing that Harvard gives you the opportunity to give is additional information. There's a space where you can upload another document. Um, and so I say use this to your advantage. I added something on this part just because I I thought I didn't hurt to try or to um, to give more information. So I typed up this one page narrative on what I was going to do that spring semester as well as in the summer. And the reason why I chose to do that was because the other parts of the application don't um, provide a space for you to do that. But also, um, but also when you're applying, you're submitting your application in December. So they will not know what your plans are for the spring semester or the summer. And so I I chose to write in there that I was gonna continue um, being a leader in my clubs, that I was gonna do some summer research, as well as um, I was gonna go to Moscow, Russia to run a summer camp for military kids at the embassy. And so I think that you can definitely use this space to your advantage to showcase that you are not gonna take a break just because you submitted your application, that you're still gonna um, pursue your passions and, and showcase what these passions are and how you're gonna pursue them in the time after your submission, after your submission. All right, so that wraps up my second video on my on the stats that got me into Harvard. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and let me know what other videos you want me to include in this channel. I really wanna help you get into your dream graduate school. And so definitely comment down below let me know and I will make more videos for you.